If you're a print-on-demand seller who has tried using AI, but you've gotten anything less than superhuman level results, then this video is for you. Because I'm going to be breaking down the five-step process that I use to get ahead of 99% of print-on-demand sellers utilizing AI the way it's meant to be. This is going to be a really fun video because we're giving away all the GPTs, everything you need. It's going to take you about five minutes to set it up once you finish watching it. So let's jump into it. And the first thing that's important to cover is the context that what 99% of people get wrong about AI, myself included for a while, is we used it like a calculator. First off, it, it bears uh, noting, I cannot believe there's not a calculator emoji, really important. But anyway, so AI is not an abacus or a calculator where meaning that it is just sitting on our desk capable of solving a set number of problems and we go to it when we want to solve that specific problem that we know it can do math problems obviously that's how a lot of people use ai that they have this mental framework of what they think it is capable of and then they just go about their day-to-day -day work and only when they think of oh yeah maybe ai could do this then they type it in and then they get one response back it's like okay, not that great. And then they stop using it. AI is not meant to be used that way at all. AI is meant to be utilized like a member of our team. And the fundamental difference here is that it is capable of so much more than just what we hand it. Two, it is able to learn and grow with us and improve over time. And three, it is able to do things without us being there, hand holding it along the way, hitting all the keys and it spitting back the answer at us. And if that's how you've used AI up until now, then make sure to watch through all these because this is really going to blow your mind. At least it did for me. And the way that we're going to be doing this is not just speaking anecdotally. We're going to be using a real world example. A couple of videos ago, uh, we used the PUD brand builder GPT and uh, we created this brand. So we're going to be setting up this whole workflow, the whole five steps uh, using this brand as an example. And this GPT, along with several others, we're going to be giving away later in the video. So make sure to stick around. So. First step is get ChatGPT Plus. Now, this is the $20 a month membership. And the reason I recommend this, and I don't do it lightly, you know, $20 is, you know, varying amounts to everybody. But the real reason we need this is the new tools that it gives us access to. So projects, files, and canvases. If you have never used them before, don't worry. We're going to walk through all of them and show you exactly how to use them. They're super simple. At these features are very, very useful for our print on demand use cases. And if you're not able to afford the $20 membership right now, it's totally all good. Just, I would recommend still watching this because you'll be able to get a full lens of what AI is able to do for you and your brand once you are at that point. Then step number two is we're going to create a project. What a project basically does is it allows us to have a designated conversation within our account that we are able to custom tailor and evolve over time. And more importantly, we're able to feed it all kinds of different resources for it to pull from, such as our previous chats, any context we want to give it, and files. So we're able to give it lots of subject matter specific examples. Remembering from our previous videos, how we talked about general AI is meant to be horizontal, meaning that it is pretty good at a lot of things, but it's not fantastic at any one. It is not vertical. We are able to create our own vertical AI by creating a project. And good news, super simple to do that. So the way that you do this is from your GPT window. You can see all the GPTs that we've made. Uh, you're going to click new project here, and then you're just going to name it after your brand. Then the way that we set it up is right now, if I was just chat with it, because it doesn't have any context, it would be like talking with normal GPT. So what we do first is we go to instructions and now we're going to enter what you see here on the screen. And this will be included in the description below as well. Or fun fact, if you're on Mac, you can just take a screenshot of this, go into the screenshot and highlight the text. I didn't know it could do that for years, game changer. So we're gonna enter this system instruction, which what this basically does is this tells ChatGPT to give it its 110% every single time we talk with it. So pretty cool prompt to begin with, but what's better yet is we are telling it that it is specifically acting as our consultant for our print on demand brand. Now, the reason this is really powerful, one, it unlocks 110% of its capacity, but two, it now has the context of how this conversation is going to evolve over time. We're going to see more examples of that in just a second. Now that we have our project set up, even without us adding any other context or anything, just that one system message, 
Now we're going to create our master prompt. Now, what that means is, as you saw, we gave it a little bit of detail in the instructions here, but we can give it way more understanding of who we are as a brand so that every additional conversation we have with it is super custom tailored to our exact use case. And the way we do this is super simple. So we just go like this. So what this question is asking is for the GPT to give us a interview style questionnaire that we are going to then respond to. And if you don't know the answers to these questions about building out your brand, that's where the, the brand builder GPT comes in handy. So you can pretty much hand this off like one, two, three punch, like piecing together from the other videos, but here we go. So now it gave us a whole bunch of questions about our brand that is getting very specific. Now, the cool thing is we could answer 50% of these and it would be way better off. I know that it looks like a lot. I used to sit there and like sweat over every single question. Just answer the ones that you have a confident answer in and then just keep moving. And it does a great job. Or, you know, the super head empty, hand it all over to AI way to do this is take these questions, put it into the brand builder GPT that you already had a conversation with about this and let it do all the thinking for us. But we want to retain some element of the process. And also, if you didn't know, you can dictate hello world. So I would just run down the list and say, what is the name of your POD brand and tagline, if any? Uh, we're called Astro Trails. How would you describe your brand's personality? Uh, outsourced to AI. That's not really a brand. I would say mystical, adventurer, uh, and space. That's not really personality, but we'll take it. What core values, yada, yada, you get where I'm going with it. So then I would just click that and then, yeah, yada, yada. And then I would send it. Then what that's going to give back to us, and we're not going to do it right now for the sake of time, but it's going to then output us a system message that we then go back to our handy dandy project and we would update. Now, the cool thing about the way we can update is you can either go back into the instructions and upload it, or you can upload files here. Or the third option is as you're chatting with it, you can simply tell it to please remember this for future reference. Now, next step is the hardest one of all, which is you now have a GPT with a project that understands your brand. It's tapping into 110%. The most important thing is we now consistently use it and not go back to using just normal generic GPT that we actually use the one that we created specifically for our brand. So, and we use it consistently. So the best way to do that is to stack our habits, whatever we're doing in our brand around using that. This is the real key that a lot of people miss. When you start your day, here are some examples of ways that we are consistently using it like on a day-to-day -day basis. So this would be an example, like give me five new, if you're in the researching mode, give me five new design slogans in my niche, like content to put on a shirt. Summarize some Etsy trends in niche plus recommended styles and write me three new ad variations to test this weekend. And then anything that you like, like these are just the tip of the iceberg. You can, as it gets better over time, I also recommend adding into this, asking it, what would you recommend? Like based on my sales and my numbers, what would you recommend I do differently? Like with my brand, like which my next steps be basically. And because of that system message we put in, it'll give you some pretty awesome outputs. Now here's the magic. Here's where it all starts to come together is as you're using this, even though we created a project, that's all great. And, and it learns over time. I mean, it's insane what's possible today, but compared to this next thing, <laughs> not to tee it up too much, it, it's really insane. And it's so simple, gets you so much more consistent outputs and hardly anybody does it. And that is, yes, the magic, creating system prompts. Now, what I mean by this is as you are using this and the part of the reason that it's really important to use this on a daily basis and not go back to using the normal GPT tools is not only so that it's learning, getting more history, but also so you are seeing where it does really well and where it does really bad. And the example use cases that like when you get a fantastic output, let me know if you, in the comments, if you ever had this, you get a fantastic output from AI and you're like, this is incredible. I wish it was like this all the time. And then next time you go to try to do pretty much that same thing, it just completely goes haywire that's very fixable and it's fixable with system prompts and here's how it works. So that's why we say start experimenting with them. 
pick a task such as product descriptions, ad copy, emails, research, basically everything that you do in the business, then you generate a draft and you can do this if you're trying to create it from scratch, not after having a really great output. If you just did an exceptional job of doing the thing, the workflow is very simple. It's simpler than this. You literally just say, give me a system message that can recreate this same quality of work based on a user prompt. And then remember this for the context of this project. And for bonus points, you give it a name for that system prompt. So whenever you call on that, you don't have to like, you know, be overly descriptive. You can just say like prompt one, prompt two, design research prompt, like that kind of thing. But if you're trying to create a really good system message from scratch, meaning you haven't gotten a fantastic output yet, then here's the workflow. So you generate a draft, live GPT gives the first version, uh, or you let GPT, Jesus, then you refine the output and then you keep prompting back and forth until it does exactly what you want. And the best way to do this and something a lot of people miss is tell the GPT not only what it should be doing more of, like how it should get closer to, to your goal, but also what it should be doing less of, like point out its inaccuracies, like just tear it apart. But a lot of people just say what they want it to do more of. They very rarely tell it what it's currently doing that it should stop. And then you say, please write the system prompt that would have generated this output from the beginning. And then that's how you create your go-to essentially prompt database that you're able to call on at all times. And you're able to build upon this until it is a world-class expert at doing every little thing in your business. And you're really building a compounding engine for your brand and not using AI the same way, essentially starting over from scratch every time you wanna do the exact same process. Like what sense does that make? I've done it for months and it's super frustrating. This is a absolute game changer and it's all completely free except for whatever, the $20 a month for ChatGPT. And there were a couple of comments on the last video. We don't get any data or literally anything from when or paid or nothing for when people use the GPT. So it's literally completely free. I just love making them to be honest and I think they're Hopefully or you guys would agree. They're super helpful. So the way you can get them is by going to wescale.ai backslash GPTs, and you'll see a full list of the ones that we have available. So feel free to try them out. And other than that, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.